First, the rule does not really protect the borrower. This is because even if the borrower can afford the loan at the time the loan is closed, a borrower with a 580 FICO score, a 3% down payment, and a 50% uh, debt-to-income ratio has a very high likelihood of default. Even if the buyer, uh, borrow, if, even if the lender has protected himself with a safe harbor or a rebuttable presumption, large numbers of borrowers are going to default. Second, the loose standards of the government-run automated underwriting systems reflect the government's desire to encourage home ownership and to provide mortgage financing to low-income borrowers. While these are laudable goals, they will encourage lenders to make large numbers of low-quality loans, what used to be called subprime loans, just like what happened before the financial crisis in 2008. In a, in a competitive lending environment, it will be difficult for lenders to impose reasonable underwriting standards when competitors can make the same loans without those standards and get them approved by the GSEs or FHA. The proliferation of these loans could cause a housing price bubble with substantial losses to financial institutions and the taxpayers uh, when the bubble eventually deflates. And if one of the government agencies like FHA or one of the GSEs has actually bought the loan or insured the loan and taken the risk of it. Uh, third, the complexity of the rule and the cumbersomeness of the requirements to document borrowers' resources will drive many originators out of the mortgage business, leaving it to the largest financial institutions, many of which are already too big to fail. The reduction in competition will allow these large players to pass along additional compliance costs to borrowers, making even solid mortgages more expensive. 